A highly amplified pattern in the jet stream continues to show a classic clash of the air masses, which includes not only the potential for more snow, but another round of severe weather in the middle of the country. But before we get to that next major storm system, we have to deal with colder temperatures across the east, as well as a pesky cutoff flow, which could potentially bring some marginal risk for severe weather in parts of Texas and Oklahoma later this week. We'll have a detailed look coming your way next. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube channel. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, making a difference, one subscriber at a time. And you know, I've declared war against the YouTube algorithm. We had some success on our previous video, and I want to keep that going. So if you can help me out, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment if you like what you see with this report, or if you have a question, I'm more than happy to answer it. Because when it comes to doing weather on YouTube, it's about reaching as many people as possible, especially when you're trying to put out critical information. And I can only do that with your help. All right, let's talk about what we're going to see for right now for this week. We do have this colder weather that's diving down across the eastern third of the United States. That'll be brief. It'll last for a, a couple of days, and then we'll see things begin to warm up. And then we have this cutoff low feature that's still sitting out in the southwest. It's going to eventually get ejected out, and that's what may be responsible for a marginal risk of severe weather as we head toward the middle of the week for portions of Texas and a little part of Oklahoma later in the week. So we got plenty to get into for this report. Obviously, we are going to talk about the big change in the jet stream heading into next week with the potential for some active weather there as well. So let's get to it. So I always like to start off with the jet stream. That's the river of air, about 30,000 feet. It drives storm systems from west to east. And whenever you see major fluctuations in it, when you see big troughs and ridges, you know you're in store for a pretty active weather pattern. So let me go ahead and get on out here as we're seeing this trough in the eastern third of the United States, plus that cutoff flow underneath with kind of high pressure ridging out into the west, which is going to be breaking down as we go over the next week or so. So as we go forward again, there's that trough across the east starts to slowly lift out. That'll allow the temperatures to begin to moderate a little bit, except for areas up maybe up toward the high plains, which will stay on the cold side here. And then as we go to later in the week, obviously on Wednesday with that low ejecting on out, could see a few thunderstorms there across portions of Texas. But then a fairly quiet pattern for that for Thursday and Friday. The rest of the week looking pretty good. But then our attention turns back off toward the West Coast once again as we're going to see that jet stream start to get highly energized. You kind of see the yellows there off the California coast as we start to see a deepening trough out there. And as we go into early next week, especially going into Monday and Tuesday, it starts to make that, that rotation, that change in direction as we go in toward Monday. And when we go into Monday, we get into right about here. Uh, you notice that jet stream's kind of doing this. We're kind of getting a little bit of a split in here. All right, and when you see something like that, that's usually a good indication of severe weather. It usually adds additional wind shear to the atmosphere there. We're also gonna see cold air diving in on the back side of this thing. So with cold air coming in behind it, there's gonna be the potential for snow on the back side of this storm system as we go into Monday and Tuesday of next week. So we're talking about the 25th going into the 26th, the way the timing is looking right now. Of course, this far out, it could potentially change and we'll continue to look for updates later in the week. Now, once the storm system gets moving into Tuesday, I think Tuesday morning will be the, the, the last time we kind of see right now for active weather. I think as we go progress to through the day on Tuesday, that we start to see it kind of weaken a little bit here as just a kind of a broad trough sets up in here. Now, what that's going to mean is we're going to see cooler temperatures across a big chunk of the country as we go toward the middle of next week, but I'm not looking at any active of severe weather going into Wednesday. So my time period right now, the way it's looking, as far as looking what the jet stream showing me, is going to be going from Monday into Tuesday, the way it's tracking currently. So we're going to drop down to 500 millibars. We're looking at the height anomalies here. That's where you can kind of track where you've got your troughs and your high pressure, your low pressure. You see in the purple and the blue across the eastern third. That's that cold shot coming down here. And then you've got the cutoff low there across the southwest, which will eject out going into Wednesday. The big red across the west, across the northwest, I should say, in Canada, that's kind of a high pressure warming there. Uh, that's going to begin to break down as we go into early next week. So we're going to say goodbye to this trough across the east. It's going to lift on out. That low pressure is going to finally eject out into Texas as it's weakening. That's what will set up the active weather potential throughout the day on Wednesday. 
But as we go into the upcoming weekend, we're gonna see a fairly quiet weather pattern across the country going in toward Friday. Pretty zonal, looking pretty quiet right now. There is a weak system that will provide some rains across the deep south with a little bit of a troppiness down in here, so you get a little bit of rain down here. Uh, but other than that, it's really not looking all that bad for this upcoming weekend. Now, notice the big trough out toward the west. So you see the blue there across the areas there with, with lowering heights across California. This is this piece of energy here, and it's going to be intensifying as we go through the weekend as it starts to dip across the western third of the United States, kind of like a big pendulum. It's going to swing on out in to the plains as we go into toward Monday. So you're getting, again, you got the cold pocket here across the west. You got a relatively milder weather out, out ahead of this. And as we go in toward throughout the day on Monday and Tuesday, that's when we're expecting the most active weather. So going late in the day on Monday and going into Tuesday, you can see we're getting kind of the uh, meetup of two different air masses kind of bumping into each other. Now, the good news is at least what the Europeans showing for right now is as I progress this from Tuesday into Wednesday, you're going to notice it starts to weaken. In fact, the way it's looking right now, it looks like it kind of tries to uh, pinch off into two different pieces of energy, uh, one here across the Great Lakes and one down here in toward Texas. And as it does that, that's going to allow this uh, whatever system that pulls out Monday and Tuesday to begin to weaken. That's why for right now, I'm not calling for any kind of active severe weather going in toward Wednesday. So we're talking about the 27th of March. So we're still looking like Monday and Tuesday, that's the time frame to watch. So now we're going to take a closer look at the continental United States. We're going to drop down to 850 millibars. It's about 5,000 feet. And we're looking at the temperatures here. And you can clearly see here in the east, boy, it is plenty cold to say the least. While most folks out in the west, well, you're looking at very mild temperatures relatively firm compared to most of the country, especially the eastern half of the United States. Now, as we go in through the rest of this week, we're going to see that trough begin to move on out, which means we're going to see things begin to modify, especially across the southeast. It may stay a little bit chilly across areas of New England, but the cold air intrusion is going to sink in out of uh, portions of Canada into the high plains, and it's going to kind of just sit there and just allow for below normal temperatures to kind of set up there for most of the week uh, and continuing into New England, not so much in the southeast, but into New England. And we're going to see a storm system that's going to kind of kick on out of there as we go into Saturday and Sunday. So going into Saturday and into Sunday, we're going to see a storm system that's going to kick on out, and that's going to allow for uh, some snows to fall from Montana, stretching over toward Minnesota out ahead of the next approaching storm system. You'll also notice the cold air start to pull down. Again, you're going to get the cold air to kind of get pulled down with this developing area of low pressure that will be coming into areas of Nebraska down toward Kansas as we go in throughout the day on Monday. And when you see the clash of air masses, you can see the colder air there and the warmer air there throughout the day on Monday and going into Tuesday. That's what could potentially set up severe weather. Couldn't rule out, again, tornadoes, the possibility of this. But on the back side of this, there will be some snow that will fall across areas of the high plains and stretching up toward Minnesota, Iowa, with that cold air coming down. And then throughout the day on Tuesday, that low pressure will begin to weaken. And we'll just see, kind of see uh, generally cooler weather for most of the country going into in toward the middle of next week. That'll linger in toward Thursday. So we're looking again for big snows across areas of the North Plains. And then we'll track that low pressure to see exactly where the additional snows will fall as well as where the active weather will be. So shifting over here to the precipitation mode, we're going to take a look at where the activity will be developing here over the next 10 days. And uh, other than the cold air for the eastern third of the United States, really looking fairly quiet across most of the nation. But of course, that's going to change as we see this active weather pattern kick in heading to this weekend and going into early next week. So let me go ahead and get on out of here as we say goodbye to the cold air as we go forward into time here across the southeast. It'll stay kind of chilly across the northeast, obviously, as we just showed you there. Uh, but going throughout the day on Wednesday, we're going to see if we get any activity here to develop uh, throughout the afternoon. Seeing a little bit of stuff starting to fire there across Texas in Oklahoma. You kind of see that right in here, right there. Uh, that's where that marginal risk for severe weather will kick up throughout the day on your Wednesday. It'll be short-lived, not a real big deal, but something we'll watch as you see the rains there progressing as this pushes off toward the east. This is what will be, what will be responsible for some of the rainy weather across the Texas Gulf Coast and going into parts of the southeast as we go throughout the day on Friday. Florida's looking really wet, especially throughout the day on Friday morning here. You see the rain stretching from Atlanta, stretching down toward Valdosta, and almost the entire Florida Peninsula with some pretty heavy rains potentially down across southern portions of Florida as that low goes by. Again, couldn't rule out maybe a severe weather possibility there on Friday, but I don't believe it'll be a big deal there across that 
uh, part of the country. Then we're going to watch our storm system coming in on the west coast as we go in throughout the day on Saturday. This is what's going to be responsible for the beginning shift and change of our jet stream pattern here as we've got the cold air in place across the Rockies as part of this energy uh, kind of moves across the inner mountain region and kind of comes into areas of Montana. You see the snow is picking up late in the day on your Saturday. That is the 23rd and going into the 24th the snows begin to erupt from Montana going over towards South and North Dakota and coming into Minnesota. Some pretty decent snows there uh, across that area out ahead of another storm system that's coming in off the west coast there. Seeing the, the deepening lowering of the heights there with the blue showing like 534 millibar heights. Uh, that is low pressure. It's kind of swinging off with that trough and that's going to set off cyclogenesis for another low pressure to kind of form there across Kansas. You see the storms out ahead of this throughout the day on Monday and then we'll start to see things begin to fire up throughout the day on Monday with the active severe weather I think potentially sitting there from areas of Missouri stretching down toward the areas of Texas as we go throughout the day on your Monday and then as this begins to move up toward the north we'll see the active weather continue overnight Monday into Tuesday so you see and we could see some severe weather there across Missouri back toward Arkansas back toward eastern Texas uh, through the overnight period and then as we go toward morning Still looking at a squall line there, and you're seeing the snows on the wraparound uh, portion of that low pressure pulling down that cold air. So we're getting snows from areas of Minnesota back toward Iowa and over toward Kansas. And the storm should be weakening throughout the day as that low pressure begins to move up toward the Midwest and up toward the Great Lakes. Still getting that wraparound snows there on late in the day on your Tuesday. And this will continue to kind of weaken as it goes up in toward Canada as we wrap up the model here and things begin to settle down across most of the nation as we go into late in the day on your Wednesday. So let's go ahead and wrap things up with a little fun. We'll look at the snow potential here over the next 10 days. Of course, when it comes to the snow, you know it's going to change, especially this far out. My rule of thumb is typically three days. But again, for forecasting purposes, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we're seeing currently as we go through the next seven days. Obviously, with the cold shot across the eastern third of the United States, we may get a little bit of snow there across portions of the Great Lakes. That's where you're seeing some of the snow there across areas of New York. And that cutoff low dumping a little bit of snow across portions of Arizona and uh, New Mexico across the mountainous areas there. But then we're going to watch that initial snow come into areas of the northern plains. That's part of that cold shot coming into this upcoming weekend. Going into Friday, you see the snow path kind of moving there across areas of Montana, going to the Dakotas, and coming in toward portions of Minnesota and the Great Lakes. That's just with that cold air that's going to be kind of moving through that part of the country. And then we're going to watch the more significant snows come into Saturday and into Sunday. Uh, watch this as that purple area, that's indications of six inches plus, starts to spread uh, throughout the early morning hours on Sunday the 24th across North and South Dakota that comes into areas of Minnesota and comes into Wisconsin and Michigan. So a nice little swath of snow through there. And then we'll watch another path of snow develop with that other low pressure system. You've seen the snow start to erupt across the areas of Nebraska and getting down into Kansas. Look at that, even down toward the Texas Panhandle coming into Oklahoma and into portions of eastern Kansas as we get that wraparound snow as that low pressure begins to track off toward the north there and now dump some additional snows into portions of Minnesota where it could be measured greatly into feet. So you can see where we're seeing that snow potential here over the seven to ten days especially with that colder intrusion of air coming in and the highest snowfall totals. Last run was kind of showing it down across the Iowa southern Minnesota border. Now it looks like it's more further to the north so you're seeing upwards of two feet of snow into this part of the country but again, you see in the snow here in Iowa, still upwards of near 9 to 10 inches here. A little path here across portions of, of eastern Kansas with that wraparound moisture, with that low pressure up to 7 inches. Of course, uh, this path of snow is upwards of about a foot, anywhere from about 6 to 12 inches uh, from Minnesota, stretching back over toward the Dakotas. And before it kind of goes across the Great Lakes, these areas across the UP of Michigan, uh, over a foot of snow, not out of the question as we watch basically two different storm systems, actually three, uh, that'll be dumping this snow over the next 10 days. So spring officially gets underway on the 19th. That's on Tuesday at 11.06 Eastern Daylight Time. And of course, Old Man Winter's letting us know he's not quite done with us just yet as we progress here and we wrap up the month of March. Of course, when you get this time of year, you're talking about the clash of the air masses and we're going to have to watch very closely for that severe weather potential for next week. So if you like what you saw with this broadcast and you'd like to stay up to date, you'd like to treat me as your own personal weatherman, 
come on board, please. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment. If you got a question down below, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Again, this service is for everyone out there in the YouTube universe. All right, that's it for now. You guys take it easy. We're going to see you on the next edition. Until then, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.